Oh, so unorganized. Jeez, where did I put that? Oh, hey, Tim. Morning, hon. How are you? Wow, those guys are just awesome, eh? They're just, wow. Oh my gosh. Tim, you have to tell me when you have guests that are going to be here before the show. Oh my goodness. <coughs> I didn't know the cadets were going to pipe us in. Holy, you have pole, man. I forgot about them until you. <laughs> they scared. <laughs> In the parking lot, I was like, what is going, I thought the bombs were going off. <laughs> <laughs> my brother, my brother used to play the bagpipes. Oh, really? And I remember one morning, he did that to my dad. My dad was <gasps> sound asleep in bed, my brother's going like, <laughs> Oh. <laughs> boy, oh boy, now I'm awake. Oh, I'll tell you. And you know what, eh? Those little rascals keeping right up with us, right? Did down the hall? I know. I was thinking those are Chasing pretty cumbersome us. things and stuff. They were like, boom, boom on us. Royal Canadian Air scared. Cadets 155 and the uh, Royal Canadian Artillery 2310. I want to thank awesome. those guys for. They're going to be. They're going to be. Uh, I'll be ch chatting with them a little later on. I want to thank them for starting off our day with a. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the deer might show up now. <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting on the deer still. Look at us. Look at you. With your, you brought, <laughs> well, I'm just so you brought your I luggage with stop. you. I brought my luggage. Is that seriously your purse. purse? This is my purse, yeah. Holy Hannah, I don't even want to know what's in there. You know what? My lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh underwear. Fresh yeah. underwear, yeah, just, so in, just case. in case. Mama always told me, <laughs> wear your clean panties. <laughs> so it's How are fine. you feeling? I feel terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm still sick. I'm yeah, still, you yeah, are. My, the infection is really bad, but but you know, here I am. It's Friday and it's long weekend, so oh hopefully I'll get some rest. I'm not going to get any rest. Who am I kidding? Keith you have to decide. I am getting rest. Okay. Well, I can Keith rest. I can wife. rest tonight and tomorrow. But Sunday, Keith, I think he's invited about a hundred people to our backyard to set off fireworks and barbecue um, and everything. I haven't been yeah. invited. Yeah. Well, Aaron. A, Aaron, the camera guy, has not been invited. That's because he's not. you uh, I didn't do the inviting. He did. Oh. I can't. If my friends were to come oh, too, right. there'd be like 102. So <laughs> Larry you and Aaron would, would be there that. too. We would go. Oh, oh and Mike, Mike too. My the ear is saying Mike, yeah. no. No, everybody wants Listen, to come. Listen, it's only an 18-foot round pool. There's not room for everybody. I don't so. need to get in the pool. Mama doesn't wear a bathing suit in front of other people. Don't you? No, no you don't you, want to you see. You wear that. a muumu. I wear a muumu, <laughs> and I stay out of the water because then the muumu sticks, and it's like. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's exactly. That's okay. The when I when I when I dance ballet, I don't wear a tutu. I wear a four four. <laughs> a four four. Yeah, that big. <laughs> you need a four four. What's going on in the in the world? Oh, so much stuff. Oh my god. We're gosh. laughing and being happy. Meanwhile, yeah. there's tragedy Doug all over the place. Uh, it's official with Doug Ford today. Like I said, there's a tragedy everywhere. <laughs> Thank goodness, though, he's going to save the province. How, million, how many million did he say? Six million. Six point or six million. Million dollars. Billion. 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 Just in cost and cutting he measures. Have, he doesn't still doesn't have like an actual format that so somebody he, can look at. He has say. his. But didn't he? Did he finally get his line by line um, no. audit? Oh, I thought he had that already, and he was starting to go through because he's already put a freeze on hiring, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And on lunches. What? Meals or something. There was a yeah yes. something about your meals. Government you service. Yeah, cut service down on the meals. Public service people are not going to have meals for free anymore. You know. Yeah. I want to know what Doug eats because Doug's a strong man. He, so he, he and, must eat like he lunches. And, he, and, like, he and Donald Trump probably go to KFC together. <laughs> 
eat the big crunch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, that awful, the shooting at the Gazette. Oh, my God. Five people killed by a guy who had a grudge. He, uh, That's he, so had, scary. he had sued them in 2014, I yeah. guess, and the case was dismissed, and he held a grudge, and he went in there, and that was that. Oh, it never ends, does no, it? No, no. And you know what? It's sort of like, it's almost like the trend starts and then it just, you know? You now, don't want to say copycat because that's too simplistic, but it's, seriously, it's like, wow. But it, I mean, at least, I mean, I know that the Demo a lot of the Democrats were trying to turn it around, the, the anti-Trump people were trying to turn it around and say, this is what happens when you yes. say the of media course. is the public enemy mm -hmm. and Milo Yosadovanovich, whatever his name is from Breitbart, who, he was saying, you know, execute them, whatever, but yes. now they're saying we didn't really mean it, but it's rather apparent that this was not motivated by anything to do with no, politics. No, it's, it's, it's a personal thing. Turn it around and try to make it political is wrong. I mean, just yeah. let's... You know what? I'm thinking about your pool now that I'm not right. invited to take part yeah, in. what about it? Um, it's going to be like hot. hot. We have a heat warning. Uh, Goma Public Health has put some tips on, our, yes. on the Sioux Online website. Take a look uh, for how to stay mm -hmm. safe in the heat. Yeah, and you have to be very, very careful. The humidity is rolling in today, apparently, and we're going to be in the 30s, temperature-wise, but it's going to feel like 40 oh, <laughs> with the Humidex. Yeah. So, so you're cool, even though I'm not invited? Yeah, I'm coming. You can come anyway, yeah. yeah. And then, also, if you don't have a pool, just use a hose. You know, yeah. Or just, yeah. you know. Take or just day. don't do anything. Or just throw awesome off. excuse to lay on the couch and just say, "With air conditioning, I'm binging or a fan. watching, yeah, or have somebody do the watch fan for your for pets. You. Stay in the shade. Yes, absolutely. Take care of your little babies. Make sure they don't get too much heat. Yeah, yeah. and and the elderly and very young children too. Right, anybody who's vulnerable. You know, you might think, oh, this is an awesome time to send the kids out to go play in the yard, which it is, but you can't send them out there for like eight hours. No. <laughs> you got to give them like ten minutes. And yeah. then bring them back in, give them lots of water. Some hydrate, popsicles. hydrate, hydrate. Yeah. Huge. And then give your dog some popsicles. Oh, really? Right? Absolutely. Don't they get brain freeze? I had a dog. I saw my dog get brain freeze once. Really? Yeah. He licked an ice cream cone. He's like, ooh. No way. <laughs> yeah. Little toughy. Mm. And he's got a little head, so that would be a yeah. big pain. Yeah. Big pain in the oh, head. Oh, <laughs> jeez. Just like you. And yeah, so, but Mr. Hey, Freeze. speaking of too. puppies. What? It's the main society it day. Is. Tim is so excited. Look at Aaron. I had a dream Aaron's that. like, that's why I come to work, man. I had a dream. I had a dream. Oh, I can still sing. Um, it was a dream because two weeks ago we had in um, that Buddha. Buddha. The dog that has the its own wheelchair. wheels. And so last night I dreamt they brought in a dog that was blind and it had like one of those Roombas around it. So whenever it bumped into something, it would back it up. You know those vacuums that do their own thing and they bump into things and then oh. I dreamt that they brought in a dog that had like a, like, like like a, a sensor thing. Like it had around. cataracts and it had this black thing around it. And whenever it walked in anything, it would boom and it would stop it from hurting itself. That was my dream. You should invent that. <laughs> you should be like rich. Uh, <laughs> and, and you know what would be better is if it actually did vacuum while the dog, while the blind dog walked Done. around. You know what? Like you could be a bazillionaire by now. I could. Find me a... You know what? Because we have said it publicly, he's got the patent on it. That's so right. don't Intelli even. Intellectual property. I know about this stuff. Don't mess intellectual with me. Intellectual property? <laughs> what? Come on. Play nice in the sandbox. Okay, it's I'll be Friday. nice. Okay, okay all, right, listen. all right. So you're going to talk to uh, some... The, the, the cadets are coming back without the... Oh. We're going to sit down and have a civil conversation. Good, good. Because, you know, why, why do you hear about all the cool stuff that they do yeah, and the things yeah. that they learn? And one of them gets to go away and fly and stuff. And he's only 16 years old. It's very, very cool. And nice, young gentleman. Super nice. And then, and then the Humane Society. And then, of course, you have news. Always. Yes. Always have the news. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with members from the cadets to talk about the benefits of being a cadet and how you can get involved. And later on, the Humane Society and Luann's going to go get ready to read the news. And we'll see you right back here on TV uh, on Mornings with Luann and Tim. See you soon. Welcome back to Mornings with Luann and Tim. And joining me now are the gentlemen who piped us in uh, this morning. You, uh, your name is Tyler Duncan. Correct. From the Royal Canadian Air Cadets 155 Borden Gray. And that's the, the name of the... That's the name of the squadron. The yeah. squadron. And Borden Gray was a World War II veteran, yeah. veteran and hero. 
Yeah. Excellent. And Mr. Newman, this is Sean Newman. Uh, Sean, you are from which? The Canadian Artillery? Royal Canadian Artillery. Yes, sir. Do you have a, a name for your squadron? Uh, no, it's just the 2310 Royal Canadian Army Cadet Corps. That's good enough for me. Yeah. And then we have uh, Ethan Irwin. Yes. And you are also with the Royal Canadian Air Cadets. Yes. Yes. And now you're three years? Three years. Four years, four years. Yes, and you can, only, you, can, you can join when you're 12, is that right? Yeah. And you are now? 16. Also. 16. 16. But you joined four years ago. So yeah. how did you hear about the cadets? Did, was it a family thing that you carried on, a tradition, or I've what? I've had family that was in both Air Cadets and Army Cadets, so then I got convinced to go into Air Cadets. You got convinced? Yeah. <laughs> was it hard to convince you? Well, a little bit. <laughs> at first, now it's... Now I don't, I don't regret it anymore. Yeah. Right on. I, I didn't at all. But yeah. Not at all. <laughs> and what about for you, Sean? Did you have a, a prior history in your family with the? No, no sir. How um, did it get? How'd you get involved? The army cadets came to our elementary school and showed us how what they do and showed us pictures and it looked fun, so I came. That's and excellent. Yeah. And how about for you? Uh, yes, I have a past uh, generations of in aviation field. Okay. And uh, my father brought me to on a Wednesday night to the uh, armories. Uh -huh. And I checked it out, and I thought it was a good, good uh, path for my life. Right? Because it helps you out in a lot of different ways, right, you guys? Yeah. Um, I would imagine, first of all, you're learning about uh, how to get along with others, so it's a lot of teamwork. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that a huge part of it? Because these are guys... That, that is probably the biggest part in the cadet program. Yeah. The camaraderie and the... In sea, army, and air. It's all. Sea, it's army, and air. Probably the main focus, yeah. We don't, we don't have uh, the sea cadets represented here today. We have <laughs> army and air. Yeah. So, but there are so there's three branches. Yes. And do you all do similar things though when you get together when when you? Uh, for, there's a lot of similar things, but the actual training that we do on Wednesday nights or on our parade nights, so for cadets, be Wednesdays, Army cadets or Mondays and Sea cadets or Thursdays. That training is different. So air, air cadets are taught aviation and Obviously, like, yeah. Army cadets do a lot more kind of. Uh, field you could, you, could you do more field here. work, right? Yeah. So you're actually uh, do you do you go camping and all that kind of stuff and yes, yeah. Sir. That must be fun. I mean, but then when you're out there, are you doing exercises? Yeah. Like, what kind of drills and stuff do you do? Like, you teach people lessons how to survive in an emergency situation sometimes, and how to make emergency shelters, and how to work as a team in the bush. Yeah. Wow. And what, what about map reading and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, that's, that's, uh, well, oh, we, yes, we that's do, uh, yeah, you, can, you do That's well. uh, part of it. There's a, uh, or in cheering, there's a competition every year, and you learn how to read a map and a compass, and you get thrown in the bush and try to find waypoints. <laughs> you get thrown in the bush? I don't know if I'd ever get out. I, I'm not very good, but I can't even find my way home without my GPS. <laughs> uh, okay, so now, what about other kinds of skills that you learn? What else, what else would you say that being involved in the cadets has, has brought to you in your lives? Let's start with you. What, what are the things? I think the biggest thing for the cadet program as a whole is the leadership. And that, that's really like the ranking number one. Yeah. And then it branches down to like teamwork, camaraderie, and uh, and just learning how to obey orders. And mm. that's got to be tough. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Teenagers are natural rebels, aren't they? <laughs> I mean, you look like trouble right off the bat, Sean. Oh. I. Th <laughs> <laughs> no, Sean's a real character. He's got a great sense of humor. I gathered that. But was it, is it sometimes difficult for you guys to, to, to maintain that, to be so, yeah. like, regimented? Like <laughs> That's it, a good use of the word. Like it, it was for the first two years in particular. But then once you get sort of a leadership position, it changes a little bit because now it's you're telling other people what to do for the most part, obviously. Yeah. Not with our officers and our more senior cadets. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, it's kind of flip side since the beginning. So you come yeah. through the ranks and you learn about, res yeah. about respect and earning respect, right? Yeah. Uh, so what about for you? I, I guess also, do you expect kids, do you work with the younger kids? Yes, sir. You do. Do you expect when they come in that you're going to have to go easy on them a little bit and, and break them in a little bit? Yeah. Because you remember yeah. what it was like when you started, right? You were probably a wild child. I was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that probably makes you really easy, easy to get along with as far as understanding where they're coming from. Yes. Yeah, the experience. Um, so what about in school? Does it help you in school at all? Does the work with cadets g give you any, I don't know, sort of qualities that, that you could, their uh, skills or qualities that are transferable to other areas of your life? Yeah, I, I wouldn't, school in some cases, because a lot of time you do in, uh, depends on what you're involved in cadets. I'm not involved in a lot of this stuff, but mainly pipe band and I did marksmanship. But there are a lot of other programs like aviation where you go away to summer camps and you learn about, like you'd have to do like physics and all that. And I could see how that would start to help with a wow. lot of science classes and whatnot. Okay. But that, that, that'd be a him thing. 
I don't do that. That'd be a I don't, I don't do the aviation stuff. So. Oh, tell me about what just happened with you. Did you just get an experience to go flying somewhere or something? Gliding or something? What was that? Oh, uh, this summer I will be accepted. I, I have been accepted at Trenton Air Base for a gliding scholarship. So uh, I'll explain. It's six weeks consecutively yeah. in an air base in Trenton. Ooh. And you will learn for those six weeks how to be a pilot, everything involved in a pilot, the air law, the meteorology. And it, they, they try to teach you all that in a six period of time in order to help your other cadets and teach them, be, na be able to teach them more about aviation in the field of aeros aerospace. You're going to be so ahead, of, are you going to go into, into yeah, that, that's aviation? That's the goal, that's the goal. You're going to be so ahead of the game, aren't you? I mean, you're 16, 16 years old, yes. you're already starting to learn this stuff. That's, that's fantastic. We guys, we gotta take a commercial break, and then when we come back, I want to learn more about. Yeah, we'll come back. You, you'll have a turn when we come back. <laughs> Stay with us. We have more coming up with these fantastic. I want to hear talk, talk about about the, the band uh, and the the, the um, you guys did great in some recent competitions. Yeah. I want to hear all about that when we come back. Stay with us more. Mornings with Lou Ann and Tim. Right after this. Oh, that was loud. <laughs> And we're back from the commercial break. <laughs> Thank you, my co-host, Sean, <laughs> from the Royal Canadian Artillery 2310. Did you say 2310, 2310? 2310. 2310. That would be silly to say the 2310. <laughs> <laughs> what do I know? OK, so uh, something that was pointed out to me was all that talk about the great summer you're going to have, going away for six yes. weeks and learning to fly aviation, all that stuff. That's all free for you? Uh, yes. It's, yeah. They they expect uh, they they want to promote the military in a way, but it's not mandatory. They just want to give you the influence of the military as a whole and as a career path, and it, it's absolutely free towards me. And I have all the ability to choose my career path as a whole, but I believe it's a good start in my life and a good stepping stone to say. What are some of the other careers that people go to after they've been through the cadets? Or do you have any ideas for yourself? Uh, or did you know people that have done that? There's a lot of things that are military related. So like basically anything military related, any position in the military, whether it's military engineer, someone who helps with, art, like in their case, like anything artillery. So like manning the guns or working the guns or fixing the guns or in the aircraft maintenance too with the art, air cadet program. Boat so maintenance, I would imagine, with the sea. All program, kinds of things. everything. Like Whoa. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. And then, so what about what is one of the things that you like to do best as as a member of the Canadian Artillery? As a member of the cadets, I I like doing band the most. It's honestly the most fun I've had all year. Really? Yeah. yeah. And you're you're a drummer, is that right? Uh, I'm the drum major. The drum major. I shouldn't just say drummer. He's a drum major. Well, <laughs> spell him. The drum major. Uh, <laughs> how long do you have to study to be a drum major? Uh, you're supposed to uh, start as a drummer and mm -hmm. learn your drum as like master. Yes. And then go up to the lead position to lead the band and direct all the drill. Did you do all that in three years? Uh, I was fast tracked a bit <laughs> due to <laughs> some reasons. <but> okay. <laughs> now, what about you with the pipes, guys? How long? How long have you been playing? Uh, oh, that whole four years. The four whole four years? Like two years, two, three years. Really? And you, uh, here I understand this is a real family thing for you. The, for the me, Duncans like have that, been... Yeah. My great-grandfather was brought over by the Sioux Pipe Band, which is now the 49th or the Field Regiment Pipe Band. Uh, they were, he was recruited while he was in Scotland by a guy who went over named, I think it was Ralph Barker. Yeah, that's okay. his name. So he was um, recruited to come over to Sault Ste. Marie to help that pipe band because at the time that pipe band was struggling a bit and they're... Ever since you know they brought him over, they haven't really been struggling at all. But your grandfather's so, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so he moved over here, and his two kids, or two of his four kids, play. One plays pipes, and one plays snare. But they, only one of them is still playing with the band because they're pretty old at this point. But so yeah. he must be pretty proud you're carrying on the tradition. Well, I think I'd hope he would be. Have you watched? Have you? Oh, he passed. Yeah, he's oh, passed. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, he's hey, what have you? What did you go away recently? To what? What kind of competitions do you get involved with? Like, tell me about that part of it. What about you, Sean? Well, the Northern Ontario competition, that's our region, because there's, I believe, three regions now. There's the northern, the eastern, and the western areas. And uh, each sector like has a competition of the pipe bands, the mill bands, the drill to arms, drill without arms. Oh, and, uh, yeah. There's a lot. So they take the, the top 
pot pipe after each of the uh, the regions, and they go to provincials and they compete, which is what we did. We got to do as well this year. We the came. top the top pipe band. Top pipe band. We were the top pipe band for our region. You so guys we, were? Yeah. So then we, then, then, we went to, then we went to then we went then we went to provincials after that and competed, and we got second place in provincials. For so. the whole province? Yeah. That's <laughs> that's really impressive. How many different bands were represented? Do you know? Uh, I think there were there were actually yeah there were four there yeah because they took an extra band that didn't get wow. a chance to compete yeah. And then was, did somebody who did uh, we had a drummer did was, was there a drummer from from the Sioux that did extremely well do you know? The drum major. Drum, made, uh, drum yeah. major got first. Not this major. one. No, the no. other one. <laughs> oh, okay. You got what? She got a uh, first like drum major overall. For the whole for, province. For the pipe, for the pipe, for bands, pipe bands. Yeah. That from Sioux Saint Marie. Good. For, what's her name? Do uh, we know? Gracie Asignac. Gracie Asignac, congratulations. You can come on my show anytime you want and drum for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe she could drum me into work one day. Uh, okay, so now what about if people want to get involved? I hear, are you doing recruitment soon or what's going on? Is it is September? I, I believe in September we're going to, the Air Cadets, are, I know for sure, are going to start trying to get a few more people out because our pipe band, we're starting, people are starting to age out of cadets, so we're starting to lose a couple of members. Oh, so you're looking for 12 year olds to start yeah, coming through the looking, ranks? We're looking, uh, anyone, any young kids start coming through Yeah, yes, uh, 12, year, 12 year old, like years old is the, like the base where you could start. You mm -hmm. can join any age. At any age? Between yeah. 12 and nine, uh, 18. Okay. Because you age out of 19. Okay. But the, it'd be the best is to join in September, at the beginning of the year, so you be along with the other. They all start at the same time. Yes. You all progress but together. But you're able to start any yeah. time in the year. You can come any time during the year, but yes. ideally it would be at the beginning, so you bond with yeah. each other, and yeah. you also so get that training right from the yes. get-go, hey? Yeah. Uh, where do they do that? Do they just come to the armory on a certain night, or do they have to call somebody, or...? <clears throat> Uh, what? Typically, like, it's Am I asking the wrong questions? Um, there's somebody off camera here. No, he says you're good to go. What? Okay. It uh, it doesn't really like you don't need to call or anything. It's yeah. It's kind of it, it's nice to get information, but you could just for anyone who's interested in air cadets, they could show up on a Wednesday night. We're there from 6:30 to 9:30. At the Armory on Pine Street. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Not 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 during the summer though. Just no. Just you get the summers school. off. Yeah. Nice. Well, not always. <laughs> what? So what would you say if you were if you were going into a club case? Okay, somebody you said somebody came into your classroom. Yeah, so um, if you were talking to a kid, what would you say would that, that would inspire them to maybe get interested? I would just tell them like some of the attributes that I've learned throughout the years in the cadet program, like to be loyal, to be honest, and to be like trustworthy within all aspects. And just like you gotta like learn the characteristics that make you a good Canadian. Ah, oh, see, you guys, I'm so impressed by you guys. You know why? Because not only do they have great, you have great senses of humor, you're also very talented musicians, and you have a, a fantastic outlook. You're good representatives for, uh, for youth in our community. So I want to thank you for joining me. That's what, this didn't hurt too much, did it? No. Not as bad as going to the dentist, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, so I want to thank Tyler, Sean, and oh, for crying out loud, Ethan. There we go, for joining <laughs> us on Mornings with Lou Ann and Tim. Hey, guys. This weekend is Canada Day. Have a great long weekend. Do you have any special plans? Uh, I've got a couple of parades. I got to play with the soup pipe band, but that's that's all I got. Okay. Well, yeah. good for you. You're going to yeah. be. A, I've got one in Bruce Pines, one in East Jordan. See, so, yeah. busy guy. <laughs> all right. What yeah. about you? Uh, I'm going to be uh, working for a bit. Okay. Till I uh, leave for the summer, but. Oh, that's right. You're going away for the six weeks. Yes. Good for you. And then, what about any plans for you for? Uh, I'm going to be my with hanging out with my sir. family. So. Very nice. That's all right. Well, all the best to you. Happy Canada Day. And once again, thanks for joining us this morning on Mornings with Luann and Tim. And we'll be right back after this brief message. Oh my god. Welcome gosh. back to Mornings with Luann and Tim. My I'm goodness. Tim. You and are I, Tim with I a can't. with a bobo. <laughs> He's a Tim with a bobo. <laughs> okay, so while Tim is um, <laughs> hurling up along, Hi, we're I'm just going to continue talking about uh, you know, the news, for instance. What happened in the news? You know what the laser thing? Have you heard about that? Okay, so I have an issue. <laughs> just one? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I don't understand lasers anyway. Like, what's the point? Just to annoy well, people? Well, what are they really for? Some people use them for pets, and some people use them in presentations. As little toys. No, no. Uh, some people use them in presentations. As pointers? Yes. Okay, that's okay. cool. That's fine. Yeah. And then so use there's them for pets also to make your cat chase the little thing. Right. I get that. But that's there's fine. also the people who would take a, a positive and turn it into a negative and flash it into the eyes of a pilot who's taking off and landing. 
Yeah. They also, people also do it to other people in arenas and stuff. I've seen them do that at concerts and stuff where suddenly there's just a laser on your chest. And that's not good. You can't look into those things, can you? It's bad I don't to look know. into. So you shouldn't be I'm shy thinking in them. it's not good. And, and the, uh, the federal government now has passed um, uh, legislation that bans these lasers at um, a lot of the bigger city airports in Canada because of that. And people think, oh, come on, it's a laser. How can the guy be that distracted by it? But if you're in a cockpit, small enough, and it's dark outside, you oh, throw a laser we're on. we're seeing what the pilot sees. Yeah, but then you throw a laser in there and the whole... Um, cockpit is lit up. Oh, the whole cockpit lights up because the whole of the cockpit laser? lights lights up with green if it's a green laser. So then your the, controls. The, the the pilot can't see what's on his board. That's terrible. And you got to see what's on the board <laughs> when you're flying a big plane like that. I yeah. I like I don't big plane. I don't like small planes. I love small planes. No, I love big the first planes. time I ever flew Bearskin Airlines, I didn't even know what the heck was going on. I was like, wait a second, that's it? There's a curtain? There's not even a door? Oh, no, no. Oh, the pilot burped. I smelled kubasa. That's too close. <laughs> you were just jealous he didn't share it. No, I, well, no, and then his, I, thought we had a, I thought we had a stewardess handing out snacks. It was, oh. his, it was his mother. She packed a lunch and there was extra. Yeah. You know, it's just like a hey, small. Bring your own, too. Small. And no it's bathroom. Like a, it's like a school bus on, no bathroom. on wings. No bathroom. Pants. I know. Yeah, I've been on it. That's a problem for you. Yes, it is. I know. Yeah, so, it's uh, a huge problem. I think they could at least put like a little bucket in a curtain mm -hmm. or something. You know? Something. Yeah, and then and then oh, the planes are old. Yeah, they're, I saw graffiti. they're rickety and racky. There was graffiti on the one that I was on. It said, "I was here, Amelia Earhart." I was nervous. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, uh, one of a doctor who lived on the lake with all of my relatives, where they had the, the camps. thirty-five cousins. Yes, the thirty one of those. Um, he had his own airplane, oh. but with the props and stuff. Yes. And I went in there when I was, was like Was it a water float plane? Yes. It was so cool. It was so awesome. You know, I love it. I know, but you're, you're kind of a conundrum because there are some things that are so basic that you don't like that scare you, yeah. like pets and yeah. dogs. Yeah. And yet you'll get on a, on a rickety old yeah. float plane. Well, because there's no teeth on a float plane. Cats, dogs. <laughs> No, there's, Chomping. there's no teeth on a float plane, ladies and gentlemen. No, I think none. that's the quote of the day. Yes, yeah, and fur. Why don't no you fur. mind flying? Well, because there's no teeth on a float plane. Right. It makes total sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember love once. That. I remember one time um, when we lived at Point Louise in the summertime. Uh, there was a, a plane that uh, his wing hit the water, <gasps> oh. and the whole plane flipped upside down. Really? Yeah, and and I just remember our neighbor Dot McLeod was ironing his American one dollar bills to dry them out. Really? I was really young. I just remember the plane being upside down. They took boats out and they got the guy, and I think he was a priest. And um, he was a flying priest. Was this a dream or was this? No, this wasn't like the dog with the Roomba. This was, this, was a, this was a real thing. And she was ironing American dollar bills to dry them out. Isn't that, Isn't that the interesting? things you think about? Yeah. The things you remember. Yeah. I, uh, I, can you sleep on planes? Yes. Yeah, me too. Not, not awesome. But I can't. Oh, the takeoff. I hear that, what, that white noise. Me too, noise. the white noise. Uh, ah, done. Yeah. And you get those pillows. You look like Pillow a dork walking pillows. through the airport with Well, it's the what? Because I thought I was like Did you cool. leave it on when you walked yeah. through the airport? Yeah. You don't walk through the airport well, with the Well, apparently you don't. On. I didn't know that the first time. I'm walking around and I was like, yeah, look at me. I'm a uh, tourist. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Aaron's going like this, our camera guy. Nice. What else oh, did you wait. talk about on the news? You talked about uh, Gene um, Ubriaco. Gene Ubriaco and Lou Nanny and Lou getting Nanny. an award. Isn't the, uh, that the awesome? The Anthony Benini Award. Yes. Those guys deserve it. They certainly do. And Ubriaco, Mr. Ubriaco, yes. is a, a sketch artist. He did phenomenal stuff. He, he did the he did work. the menu cover for Aurora's when we were at <clears> Aurora's and McNabb. Um, and Gene is Chuck Gassy's father-in-law, yes. right? And so anyway, he did the artwork for the cover, and it was all of James Street and Gore Street and stuff back in the 50s. See, that's awesome. Really cool. His, his, the stories that he has to tell mm -hmm. about growing up back then, and like people don't even know that the original Aurora's mm -hmm. was on James Street in the 1950s. Really? She had a Aurora's on Jane, and she was the sister of Mary Gassy. So Mary and Bruno Gassy and Chuck Gassy, they're the people who we know that owned Aurora's later, like right. from the 70s on. But Aurora Bukovic, who was an Aurora Gassy, she opened the first restaurant. She called there was her, a real Aurora. Aurora Bukovic. Oh. 
Oh. Yeah, she was Aurora Gassy, and she married a, a Bucky Buckovich. I think maybe they call Bucky. Anyway, so, and she was our neighbor at, the, at Point Louise. We had the best neighbors at Point Louise. Apparently. You could go to Aurora's and knock on her door, and she'd have Aurora's pizzas in the <gasps> freezer for 10 bucks. Yeah. Nice. But anyway. She charged you? <laughs> well, yes, of course. She, we, it was Friday nights, and people would go to her, her camp and knock on her door and say, can I buy a pizza? Oh, I thought you meant like you were a little kid. Like, no, no. We, oh. She would always have pizzas in the freezer. I see. But anyway, so... She, when she opened the first restaurant, Aurora wasn't much of a cook herself, so she went to her sister-in-law, Mary Gassy, and she said, oh, can I have some of your family recipes that's a connection. to open my restaurant on James Street? And so Mary said, sure, here you go. And then she opened the one on Bruce Street, and then tore that one down, built a new one, which is now the Breakfast Pig. Right. And then the, the original Aurora's was on the, uh, across the street in a little white building, and, that's, and now, now it's a parking lot. Anyway. Then she sold the restaurant to Chuck and Mary and Bruno Gassi. Oh. And, so she, and so Mary said to me, can you imagine? I, I gave my sister-in-law those recipes yeah. in the 1950s to open her restaurant on James Street. Fast forward 20 years, and I'm having to buy them back <laughs> to buy her restaurant. Burn! <laughs> I know, but they were all they all stayed great friends. The Gassi oh, family, they were everywhere. They were great. They are yes, awesome. Yes. And they, they cook good, too. They do, and now, there's, and now Chuck has... Um, well, it's not called, it's called Ubriacos. Yeah. yeah. So there's a little bit of Sault Ste. Marie history for you, ladies Thanks, and gentlemen. Thanks, Tim. You're welcome. Thanks so much for that. We're going to take a commercial break. Are we? Yes. And then, On TV Mornings with Luanna, Tim continues right after this I'm with gonna... a very special guest. Oh, yes. Stay tuned. We are back with our special guest, Jesse James. <laughs> oh, sorry, and Laura Smith. <laughs> Laura, Laura is an animal control what, officer yes. from the Humane Society, Two Sentiment Humane Society. And thanks for joining us today, Laura. Thank you for having us. And this is Jesse James. Yes. Hi, Jesse James. Look at, <laughs> just make yourself oh, to home, buddy. That's what he does. Look at it. And now, how long have you had Jesse at the, human, at uh, the shelter? Jesse's one of our long term residents, so he's been at the shelter about six months, almost seven months now. Oh, uh, he's a mature cat? He's almost 11 years old. Seriously? Yes, and he doesn't act like it, though. He acts like a kitten. Does he? Yeah. He's diabetic, too, so we have to give him insulin twice a day. Oh, diabetic? Yeah. How does he get diagnosed as being diabetic? How do you find that out? Uh, there's a few different symptoms. They start to lose weight. They, they start to go to the bathroom a lot more, eat more, things like that. Oh, I wonder if Luann's diabetic. <laughs> 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 I'm going to be in trouble if she watches this segment. When they're first diagnosed, it's actually a fair amount of vet appointments in that to regulate their blood sugars to uh, get the right amount of insulin because it's trial and error at first. So it took us a few months to get this old man healthy and happy. Really? Yep. You got it all figured out? Yeah, he's doing so what great. what would a new owner expect to have to do with, with Jesse James and, and his diabetes? Um, pretty much just uh, do keep doing the insulin twice a day. How do you do with the needle? Yep, just, it, just like a really? person. Yep. You get needles twice a day? He does, we feed him at the same time, so he's happy. He doesn't even notice his little poke. Where does the poke go? Just right in his shoulder. You get poked in the shoulder. We switch sides. You don't even care. He doesn't care. As long as he's got his wet food while he's eating, he doesn't even look up. He, uh, and he's still active. Oh yeah, he runs around. He's got free reign of most of the shelter. Sometimes we have to put him in timeout because he likes to knock things off tables. <laughs> so especially Jesse. full Tim Hortons, he likes to just watch those go onto the floor. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> but he gets uh, all day when we're there. He's just loose and he runs around. And What would be an ideal home for Jesse, do you think? Um, probably a quieter home with people. He loves attention. He loves just sitting on laps and being maybe, pet and would loved. He be, would he be good? So um, maybe some, someone who was more senior then? Probably, yeah. As but long as they were okay with the insulin shots. Yep. That's the, important. They'd have to, maybe maybe we could find a diabetic owner and they could do their shots together. Together. If you're a diabetic <laughs> and you want a cat, Jesse James and you could have your insulin shots together. It's not a lot of uh, vet visits or that. The insulin's fairly inexpensive and it, it lasts a while. Um, and then if you have your own glucometer, which is to check your blood sugar levels. That was you, a good word. <laughs> you can do that from home, or if not, it's like bi-weekly to monthly vet appointments every once in a while just to make sure just you're still on. Just to make sure. 
to make sure he's still on track. And he's had all of his, he's, he's completely up to date with shots and completely. he's already neutered. Yeah. Oh my gosh, look at him. Just roll right over there, Jesse James. Oh, did you guys name him? No, he came with that name. So was he, did he belong to a family who couldn't care for him any longer? Uh, he do belonged, you know I do. He, uh, he initially actually came to us as a temporary emergency board, which is a service that the shelter offers through certain organizations. Um, his owner had gone into the hospital. Oh. Um, so we'll uh, temporarily, for 30 days, we'll board an animal at no cost. That's for emergencies. Yep. If the homeowner has to go away and not can't take care of the pet in an emergency. Yeah, we'll do it for women in crisis and Did other anybody organizations. Did anybody know that? I did not know that. No, I that's, that. that's Luann, you're back. That's a phenomenal service. Yeah, 30 days, absolutely no charge. We take care of, like him, we had to take him to the vet every two weeks and that and get everything sorted. Um, but then, unfortunately, I mean, his owner's okay, previous owner's okay, but still unable to care for him with what he needs. I understand. So, we're happy you to have him. great. <laughs> now, I, I didn't know this either. So, you're the, you're, you are an animal control officer, and I said, how many of you are there? And, and she said, Laura said, well, we just hired one more. And I said, so how many are there now? And she said, two. So, you were the only animal control officer up until... For high. a short period of time, yes. How, what, did you go to school for that? Uh, no, it's just lots of experience. I've worked in shelters for a long time. Okay. So. so now, I didn't know this either. Part of her job, Laura's job as an animal control officer, is that you're on call 24-7. 24-7, 365 days a year. So if a dog were to get hit and there were an emergency, like at 2 in the morning, you're going to get paid? Yeah, if, the, if it's just a stray dog that gets hit by a car and, and somebody calls us, we have to go out. Um, wow. A you variety of situations we get called out. The police will call us out to assist them in some situations as well. I love the Humane Society, and I think what you do is just amazing. And so thank you very much for all you do for our community, all of you there. Yeah. And thank you, Jesse James, for coming on my show this morning. You're going <laughs> to fall asleep right in my hands. Ladies and gentlemen, I think this is, uh, and I'm not, a, just so you know, I'm not a really huge cat person. I don't, you know, I, I like cats. I've owned a cat once in my life, but I'm really a dog guy. But I'll tell you, Jesse James, you kind of... Won my heart over today. He's a pretty cool cat. Yeah. He's a cool cat. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, there he goes. Jesse wants to go, and so do we. So we'll be back to say goodbye with Lou Ann on Mornings with Lou Ann and Tim once again. Every Friday, we love having you. It just makes my Fridays when you guys show up. So bye, Jesse. He just jumped off the table. <laughs> He's, He's gone. Fine. He's gone. See ya. Uh, Laura. Pleasure. We'll, maybe we'll see you next week. Thank happy you. Happy Canada Day. Have you a great too. long weekend. You and as I hope well. you don't get any calls. Me too. Okay. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. Thank Thanks. you. Yeah. And welcome back to On TV's Mornings with Luann and Tim. Man, the Humane Society cannot do more, I don't think, for the community. <laughs> so, I know. They are awesome. The emergency service, what, a month? I didn't know about yeah. that. 24-7 on call, did not know that. That's terrific. We yeah. certainly hope you have an awesome long weekend. Enjoy that extra day off. And if you're not working, stay cool because, you know, you might as well be at work if it's going to be that hot out, right? And we'll be back on Tuesday morning. We're taking Monday off as yes, well, we like are. the rest of Canada, to enjoy Canada Day. So we'll see you Tuesday morning, bright and early, on Mornings with Luann and Tim. Until then, take good care and have a great weekend.